I'm Brian Longmire, and I also sit on the Attainable Housing Task Force, and along with James Skognak, uh, I will we will be co-moderating tonight's event. And it's a very popular event. We've had a lot of people register and log on this evening. It shows what an important issue this is in our area. We'll get to James in just a second with a message from Bruce Power, but I would like to thank him for joining us tonight as well as uh, Bruce Power for helping out with technical support and the uh, platform for the meeting this evening. Today, we're going to also introduce you to the chair of the Attainable Housing Task Force, as well as some of the members who will let you know a bit about what our goals are and what we've been up to so far since we've already been working through Zoom for a few months now. I'd also like to let the public know that uh, we encourage your participation in tonight's uh, event and also your input throughout the entire process. And we'll be taking and answering questions a little later on this evening. Hopefully many of those questions that you have will be answered during the meeting. But if something comes up that you would like to know, you can direct your questions via email this evening to j.posner at soggingshores.ca or you can give James a phone call at 832-2008, extension 120. That's j.posner, which is P-A-U-S-N-E-R, at soggingchores.ca. And we uh, already have had a huge response so far. So if we don't get your, to your question directly tonight, uh, hopefully a task force member will get back to you within the short term with answers to your questions. Now, I'd like to turn things over to my co-moderator tonight, and once again, a big thank you to James Skognak from Bruce Power. James? Great. Thanks very much, Brian, and uh, and appreciate you uh, and the task force members putting this session together tonight. Proud personally, as a resident of Saugeen Shores, uh, to, to, to be a part of this important discussion. You know, I think, uh, you know, before we look at this from a Saugeen Shores perspective, if we if we think across Canada and we think of the many challenges that, that we have as a country right now, you know, uh, attainable and affordable housing is a, is a problem in many communities uh, across Canada. And, uh, you know, the reasons for those are, are different depending on, on what parts of the, the, the country uh, we're, we're looking at. But at the end of the day, this is, a, this is an issue that should concern and be an area of focus for, for everybody in the community. Um, if you happen to be in a, in a situation where you, you do, you're, you're, you're comfortably in housing, this should still be uh, an issue of importance to, uh, to you because this is all about our community and our, our neighbours and, and really what we're trying to achieve together. You know, at the end of the day, we have a scenario here in Soggy Shores, like, like many communities across Canada, um, where we have far too many people, and I know the, the chair of the committee, Mike, uh, Maya is going to be talking about this some more, but we still have far too many people who don't have access to um, uh, to, to housing. Um, and if we're going to continue to be to grow as a community, be successful as a community, be inclusive as a community, um, and 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 really be a, you know a, and look to the many things that we want to achieve together as a community, this is an item that uh, we're going to have to uh, really focus on together, unite on together. And make some progress on. I really want to, as I mentioned before, thank uh, Mike as the, the chair of this committee, but I also want to broadly thank the municipality of Saugeen Shores for, for taking this on. You know, it's, it's great leadership on the part of Saugeen Shores to, uh, to be taking such a leadership role on this and engaging the community. The solutions to these uh, challenges that we have, you know, are going to uh, be wide ranging. They're going to involve a lot of players. They're going to involve other levels of government whether it's the federal government, provincial government, uh, county government, municipal government, uh, private sector uh, uh, players, businesses, I mean, you name it. Uh, this is a, this is a, a challenge that is, is, is deep rooted. And we also see many things in the current environment with COVID-19, which will certainly amplify this issue. Uh, earlier on this week, you may have seen uh, um, uh, signals from the various central banks talking about low interest rates for a longer period of time related to COVID-19, that's going to continue to have massive pressure on this challenge. And while we are positioned as a beautiful region of Ontario, uh, which is great for tourism, you know, I think we will continue to see in this post-COVID world, a lot of migration to rural areas uh, for, from people who typically lived in suburban or urban areas. So this is, a, this is a challenge that is only going to get more significant, but I actually see it more as an opportunity. 
And, and as I said before, this is not something that just a handful of people should be focused on. It should be something we're all focused on. And so I want to thank you for joining tonight. For those of you that can't join tonight, we will be having uh, the session uh, posted online. And this will be the first of many important dialogues uh, on this front. Um, i now like to, uh, to introduce uh, the chair uh, of this committee, Mike Myatt. Uh, you know, uh, I know if you live in Soggy Shores, you know Mike, so I don't really need to give Mike much of an introduction. Uh, aside to say that, you know, Mike is a, a tremendously dedicated and hardworking individual. Uh, I can tell you since he uh, reached out uh, to me a number of months ago for participation in this, I... You know, I see the amount of work that, that Mike puts into things. He's very dedicated. You're going to hear from other uh, members of council, Councillor Grace. You're going to hear from uh, from many, and of course Brian and many others. And you know, uh, I think the best way to introduce Mike is really just as a as a as a resident of the community is to thank you for this. Um, this is a tough issue, and it takes um, you know strong leadership to step up and, and tackle these issues. And you know, we know the solutions won't be easy, but uh, we know the reward is significant uh, by by starting this really important exercise. So I'd now like to pass it over to Mike and, and also add my thanks to all your leadership, Mike. Well, thanks so much, James, and uh, for those kind words. Uh, really appreciate it and uh, a little flattering. And um, I just want to say, uh, you know, a big thank you to uh, to yourself and James for moderating this evening, uh, James, and, and also to Bruce Power. Um, Bruce Power is a wonderful corporate citizen here in our community. You do so much for, for Saugeen Shores and area, for the broader Grand Bruce area, and we thank you for that. Um, and to our listeners this evening, um, thank you for your participation. Um, the, uh, the response to our launch has been simply uh, tremendous, uh, which confirms that housing is a, you know, is a very important area of concern for many of our residents here in, um, here in Saugeen Shores. Um, we have well over 200 residents um, listening in this evening, and I think that's a real testament to the, uh, you know, the concern uh, our residents have, to the interest they have in, in housing in general, and fi finding that attainable, affordable housing. I'd first like to say that, you know, my heart uh, goes out to those residents in Sogging Shores who are feeling the pain, uh, feeling the pain of not being able to find, uh, to buy their first home. You know, the, uh, the average household price to purchase a home right now in Saugeen Shores in the last three month average is $501,000. And $501,000 is certainly not, a, not affordable and not attainable for many, particularly for those residents who live on, on low to modest incomes. And I, I think, wouldn't it be great um, if we're able to, to build new housing stock, you know, for less than than $300,000, less than $250,000 or even lower. And one idea that has been discussed is, is tiny homes. We're gonna to speak to a little bit later, but our, our task force is, uh, is pursuing um, plans for this avenue to build uh, housing of, of a lesser cost and other initiatives. Um, we would like to find partners in our, in our community that you know, would be willing to build uh, apartment dwellings uh, that can rent for 600, 800, 1,000 for one, two, three bedroom homes. Um, that would be maybe a little more attainable for, for residents of our community. Currently, um, some residents in Saugeen Shores are paying $1,200 to $2,000, maybe more, for a, a one, two, three bedroom apartment home or a home. And that, that's, that's out of reach for some people. Um, and, and people are finding it difficult in our community uh, with these high rental rates. Simply put, um, you know, I think we just we we need to find more attainable and and affordable housing for our for our residents. You know, Saugeen Shores and our mayor Sharman has said this many many times, and I believe Luke's uh, listening this evening. Uh, he indicated later today he was listening in. Um, he's mentioned many times that Saugeen Shores is is Bruce County's fastest growing community uh, community, and while prospering in many areas, sadly. Uh, Saugeen Shores is facing a shortage of attainable housing. Uh, there are currently 572 applicants on the Bruce County uh, Community Housing Registry wait list. And Saugeen Shores represents 300 of this number, 300 of the 572, which is an alarming number. In my view, um, having over 300 applicants on a wait list for affordable housing is 300 too many. 
And again, I, I know Mayor Charbonneau um, um, has been very supportive at, at the county level and, and around the council table with talking about affordable, attainable housing. And um, I, I you know I've had some conversation with members of council, and there's 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 a will there, I do believe, uh, to correct the situation. I've heard from I've heard from many residents. Uh, I've, I've listened to their frustrations. Um, some have lost hope. Um, some have conceded that owning a home may never be an option um, due to escalating housing costs. And I find that very sad. I really do. And I, I find that very unfortunate. We need to work together to change the situation. Hence, we have our Attainable Housing Task Force form. Um, I talk about business for a little bit here, just for one second. And having attainable and affordable housing for all in our community needs to be a high prior priority for our municipality when and businesses have made this clear at least to me uh, when workers can live in town so workers can live in town businesses find it easier to hire and retain employees and uh, so I, I know Brian I think maybe at this point you may want to talk about attainable affordable that's right Mike I, I did have a question, and I'm I, I, I'm glad that I'd like to chime in for a moment. And I'm so glad that you mentioned both affordable and attainable. And uh, I think the terms are slightly intertwined under the same umbrella, perhaps. But I think they have both specific meanings. And I was just wondering if you would take a minute and explain the difference between affordable and attainable, and if there is a difference in there. Is there a specific reason we use the term attainable for the task force? And that was a topic of conversation right at the beginning of the process, Brian, when we when council approved the terms of reference for the quote attainable housing task force. And you're right, you're absolutely you're correct. When when we talk about affordability and attainability, they really are very much intertwined. Um, I, you know, I just want to give you an example that this, the, a large percentage of the 300 applicants on the Bruce County housing wait list are looking for affordable housing and and geared income rent geared income units well this may be a county responsibility we need to find ways brian uh, to build more housing stock for this segment of the population so affordability the rent geared to income housing units is just one 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 stream you may you may have a, a you know family that's that that uh, com combined family household income is is um fifteen hundred dollars a month um, you know, if, if you take the 30% rule, um, they should really only be paying four to $500 per month for rent. That's, that's, that's when it, we're talking about affordability. So we, we need, we need to do a better job for those living with the low to moderate incomes, Brian and James and, and those listening to, we need to work closely with Bruce County to address this housing need. Um, our provincial government defines affordability as a unit which rent which the rent does not exceed 30 percent of gross annual household income particularly for low and moderate income uh, households so so again Brian using that 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 scenario around the 30 percent and we'll top it up to to forty thousand dollars a year for household income that would indicate that you should not really be spending any more than a thousand dollars per month on on rent and unfortunately um this is simply not the case in in sogging shores we are paying some people are paying a lot more than a thousand dollars per month for rent and again um we need to fix this and, and again particularly for those lower uh, to modest incomes we talk about attainable housing i'm going to read to our listeners and what our housing task force has adopted um, our definition of attainable housing if you bear with me for a second attainable housing refers to the providing of and sustaining a range of price controlled, comfortable, good quality housing options for both rental and home ownership for those who live and work in Saugeen Shores. Um, so we talk about $501,000 being the current price to buy a, a home. We talk about having to pay over $2,000 for rent for a three bedroom home or apartment. Those numbers are certainly not affordable for some and and uh, for many uh, not attainable and um, so Brian James I hope that Brian I hope this helps to explain the difference between affordable and 
Atina, we can talk about that, those those definitions for quite some time, but, but both are closely intertwined, but affordable addresses rent geared income is one example, while attainable refers to prices for homeownership and rental rates that are attainable within reach for those in low to moderate income. So this evening, really, though, is about officially launching our attainable housing task force. And this is the opportune time, I think, for me to pay tribute to our, our housing task force. And I think many are listening this evening. I hope they are. Um, our task force members are wonderful volunteers. Um, and I, I would like to say a huge thank you for the for the job you're all doing. It's 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 not, it's going, not going uh, unnoticed. And um, we appreciate your great work. And to conclude, um, again, um, I feel the pain. Uh, that many of our residents, I've talked to many people, I, f- I feel the pain many of our residents are experiencing uh, with escalating uh, housing and rental costs. And uh, as chair of the Attainable Housing Task Force, I'm confident that sooner or later, and hopefully sooner, uh, our mayor and council will be able to partner with investors, um, Bruce County, and our community at large to address our housing situation and make housing more attainable. Uh, for all. These, this evening's launch starts the process, and I'm, I'm saying it just starts the process uh, with information gathering, and together I really do believe this. Um, we can make um, good things happen when it comes to affordable and attainable housing. So those are my opening remarks, uh, Brian and James, and I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. And uh, on a personal note, I would like to echo James's remarks from earlier and thank you for all the hard work you do with our council and of course uh, taking this task force as a chair because uh, it really really is an important issue for Soggy Shores and I appreciate you uh, uh, and the group allowing me to be part, uh, part of such an endeavor because it's also an important issue uh, to me and the people around me as well so we really appreciate that. Now we thank do have a, a few preliminary questions coming in and we have taken some over the week since we uh, talked about this uh, and launched some publicity earlier in the week and uh, I'd like to introduce another task force member Councillor Cheryl Grace welcome Councillor I'm going to direct one of the uh, first questions to you Uh, and this is it Uh, we understand that the attainable housing task force has been directed to make recommendations to council for consideration that is our job as a task force uh, we know this issue is a top priority for council, too. If you've been watching council meetings, they are taking this very seriously as a, a very important issue. What uh, this uh, question wanted to know was, what is the timeline for those recommendations to be presented? And when do you expect that to happen? Thanks, Brian. Uh, throughout the autumn, we'll be gathering input from Sogging Shores residents and businesses through our survey. Uh, We'll have key stakeholder meetings that will be taking place and also some community roundtable meetings. So that will give us about a month to prepare our final report and recommendations. And our target is to present to council by December of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cheryl. And we had a question, uh, James, did you have another question for Cheryl? No, I think that's great. And, and maybe Cheryl, sure while we're on you, uh, and just to build off that. So, you know, I know obviously feedback is, is really important in this process. Are there any, um, early concepts, thoughts, um, that, that you're sort of leaning towards in these early days? And are there any, any types of areas that you would like, you know, to get people specific feedback on? Sure. Thanks, James. Um, We have been meeting regularly for um, a number of months now. Uh, We're collecting um, feedback. We've been talking to um, other municipalities, uh, researching other municipalities. And one thing we've identified already is that public and private partnerships are critical to the success of our attainable housing goals. These partnership opportunities um, may take and will take, I'm sure, the form of joint initiatives with the county, uh, as well as providing support for developers who are building affordable options like tiny homes. And we're striving also to get an increased stock of attainable rental units. Another thing that we are 
doing is that we have already taken significant steps to provide economic support for affordable housing initiatives. For instance, in 2018, our municipality introduced financial incentive programs to support the construction of affordable housing through our strategic plan and our community improvement plan. But we recognize that we still need to do more. So in our recent August 10th meeting of council, we approved the 2020 Community Incentives Program for Affordable Housing. This particular initiative will provide $150,000 of funding for 2020 to assist developers in building affordable housing. And this amount comes from already budgeted reserves. So we are not, uh, council did not have to approve um, additional spending on top of the budget. I'm happy to say that our entire council and staff support these initiatives, and so does our community. It was obvious because in the first official plan review public survey, which was launched earlier this year, and we had an official meeting in uh, August about this, uh, affordable housing was definitely identified as one of the public's top priorities. Uh, again, recognizing the importance of partnerships, our task force is studying municipal housing corporation models uh, from across the country. And uh, we're also looking at the use of municipally owned lands as possible tools to fulfill our goal of increasing attainable housing in Saugeen Shores. Our, our task force is really looking forward to hearing what the public has to say on this very important topic. Uh, we're glad that you're participating tonight, that you're sending in questions, and please fill out our survey, and thank you. Great, thanks very much, uh, uh, Cheryl. And, and, and Brian, um, maybe what we'll do is we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll just maybe go to the, the, the the next area, which I know you want to cover, which is really about where people can submit feedback and questions to. That's right. And uh, thank you, Cheryl, for all the work you've been doing on the uh, task force. And thank you, James. Uh, yes, that is right. We want people to be involved in this. This is a very important process. We know it's important by the number of people who are registered to view tonight. And uh, you can tell people there will be a rebroadcast of this. We will get uh, a copy and share the link on the town's website. That information will come later. But if you have questions that you would like to maybe see if we can answer tonight, maybe you have uh, something that we could get to. We are taking questions and fielding them at the moment. Jay Posner is at the uh, town offices. You can email him a question right now, j.posner at soggingshores.ca. We do have a lot of questions that we're going to get to soon, and uh, we will try to answer your questions. If we don't, someone will get back to you for sure. So, uh, James, does that work? So, yeah, just before we get into the, uh, uh, the questions, I think the next area we want to really talk about is another area of uh, focus and interest in the committee. And I, and I want to also, you know, thank and also welcome uh, Jay and Minnie uh, for this piece in particular, who have been really taking a leadership role uh, as part of this subcommittee, uh, as part of a, a survey um, that, is, that uh, has or is being launched. And I think what's really important about this survey is, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, different demographics, there's a lot of different factors, different considerations, and, and really having full participation in this survey, I think Jay and Minnie it's a really key element that, that the committee has the right information as part of this process to really understand, um, you know, what some of the key issues are out there. So um, maybe I'll turn it over to you to talk a, a little bit about the survey, um, uh, what you're hoping to get out of it, and uh, most importantly, how can we all support uh, uh, this key survey that you've issued? Thanks, James. Uh, since returning to Port Elgin in 1989, I certainly know about attainable housing. 
I moved eight times in 30 years. So my family is well aware that finding rental uh, properties, as well as those people like myself that are scrolling down the MLS listings, looking for that perfect home, their forever home, and not being able to find it in their price range is a huge issue. So we've decided as a committee that we're actually going to do a housing needs survey. The town cannot make any steps or go forward without knowing what the public actually wants. So for you people that are listening tonight or will be uh, listening to this on the rebroadcast, we need you to fill out the survey either online or the print option, which Jay will be talking about later. But I just want to tell you a little bit about the survey itself and why it's important. Housing's needed for all ages and all incomes in Saugeen Shores. Uh, as Mike uh, Myatt mentioned, the difference between affordable and attainable housing. We need ho housing for all ages and all incomes, and that's a fact, and it's not being ignored. But before we can plan or build for residents, we have to know what it is that you want. And that has to be defined by many different people, many different age groups, from seniors to young people, and those with very low incomes to those with moderate or high incomes. This task force was created for all residents' housing needs. To do that, we need to hear from you. So we like to know, I'll just give you a little idea of what's on the survey. Do you want to rent or do you want to own? That's going to be key for the town when they go to plan or any organizations or partners that will be looking at helping us to create a housing inventory. What type of housing do you want? And why is the current housing that you're in right now? Why is that not sufficient or to your liking? Um, maybe you have mobility issues. Maybe you have accessibility issues. Those are also going to be needed for our builders or organizations that may look at doing rental facilities or actually looking at building homes for purchase, especially developers. And what are your top factors in choosing a home? What are you looking for? This survey from the Housing Task Force really wants to hear from you, the public. We won't be able to do our job successfully unless we hear from you. And we always want to know, you may have some ideas that we haven't even thought of. I'm going to let Jay explain how this information, once we collect it on the survey, what happens then? Because that's always what happens when you have a survey done. Now what? So Jay's going to answer the question of how the survey will be used. Thank you, Minnie. Uh, right away, our, our survey has three main purposes. And the first is uh, for the use of the task force to support its recommendations when they're presented later this fall or early December. Um, it'll be critical that they have a good base, a good understanding of the community's needs. So it's it's obviously uh, important to uh, have a broad uh, input on the survey. Secondly, uh, I'm a staff person at Saugeen Shores. I'll be able to use the survey to, um, when I meet with developers or when I meet with uh, nonprofit groups, if they're interested in building housing, I can present them, well, consider this. This is what our community has answered, and this is what they have identified as critical needs. Uh, they can take that information. Uh, and I guess the third uh, main purpose, uh, Councillor Grace has uh, mentioned this, it is a top priority of our official plan review. I'll be using the information in that review to help inform policy changes so that when they're presented to council, uh, they can uh, they will know that the survey uh, results were part of that recommendation. Uh, but I think it needs to be stressed, and I know many you'll you'll get to this part in a very brief second, but we don't want just residents that are in Sogging Shores to fill it out. We want to know people that from people that don't live here that might want to live here. Uh, what their needs are too. So I, I'll turn it back to you, Minnie, to address that. Thanks, Jay. So as Jay mentioned, we do want people from outside the area. It's interesting to note, maybe people don't know this, that over 42% of the people that actually work in Saugeen Shores do not live in Saugeen Shores. So we're going to be asking people from outside the area to also give their input as well. As we mentioned, the survey is online for those that are out of the area and Jay will have a list of where the survey, the paper copies can be picked out. So we do want everybody to fill it out. Who are we looking for? Well, we're looking for uh, many different types. We're looking for young people. Maybe you want to move out of your parents' home and start a new job or career in Saugeen Shores. 
maybe young people that have been away and want to come back here. Their parents live here and they want to actually start their career in Saugeen Shores. Maybe it's renters. Maybe where you rent doesn't meet your needs. Maybe you have a growing family or maybe you're looking to purchase your very first home. Uh, maybe you're looking to purchase, as I said, as a young person, but perhaps you're you're looking as a senior or a retiree to go from a home to the next chapter of your life and looking for a different type of home. And you're not sure price-wise that you can find anything within the community. Uh, if you're living in your home right now, maybe you're thinking, well, I'm not moving right now. I don't need to fill out this survey. We'd still like you to fill out the survey because your needs will change as you age. We need to know, not just this year, but coming years, what you would like to have in a home. This survey, as I said, is for all ages and all incomes to fill out. The town wants to know what your housing needs are today and in the future. This is your opportunity to have the home you want planned for you in your community. Jay, how can the public get their own housing needs known for now, uh, online and with uh, uh, in the public actually picking up a paper survey? Yeah, well, I mean, the the uh, easiest way uh, is to go to soggingshores.ca slash attainable housing. There you'll find a link to the survey and you can uh, you can fill it in. It only takes about 10 minutes. I, I did it myself, uh, um, so I, I know how long it might take. Uh, but soggingshores.ca slash attainable housing. That's the uh, easiest way. Uh, but if you prefer, uh, you can pick up paper copies throughout town. Um, I'm, these businesses are listed on the Sogging Shores website at the address I gave, but I'll say them here. Uh, in Southampton, you can pick them up at Foodland, at the Remax offices, at the Offshore Bakery, and at South, South Stables. In Port Elgin, you can pick it up at 98 The Beach. Thank you, Brian. Uh, at the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce at Roland's Independent Grocer, at Remax uh, offices in Port Elgin, at Sutton Realty, and at the patio in downtown Port Elgin. Thanks, Jay. We need your help in getting a large response. We're asking you to also help spread the word. So for you 200 plus people, they're online tonight. We'd like you also to tell your friends, tell your family and your coworkers, pass on the link. The more people that respond, the clearer picture, the town, the developers and staff, and our partners and nonprofits that may be looking to help increase the housing inventory will have options to rent and to purchase by answering the survey. And one last time, uh, you can go to uh, soggingshores.ca slash attainable housing. Uh, if not, you can go to the town website, soggingshores.ca and, and search for attainable housing. We're also posting on social media at Facebook and Twitter. Look for posts there if you have difficulty finding it. I'm sure if we had TikTok, it would be there as well. Uh, and reminder, paper copies throughout town. And I guess I'll turn it back to, to Minnie. Hi, we're just going to ask you, you can also subscribe to the town emails to get up to date on what your housing task force is doing for you, our activities and our progress. So if you want to keep up to date, please subscribe to the town's uh, emails. You guys, it sounds like uh, there is absolutely no excuse not to fill out this survey. None got whatsoever. It everywhere. It's available where fine everything is sold and online, of course. So make sure you get to that. And uh, I want to thank you too, particularly for the uh, the work you do on uh, this task force. Minnie, I have no idea where you come up with all the uh, information you uh, have delivered to the task force. Your research skills are unbelievable. And James, your knowledge of the uh, bylaws and the rules of the uh, town and province and beyond. Uh, continue to blow me away every time we get together on Zoom and we uh, have questions regarding the task force. So thank you so much for the great work that you guys are doing. We really appreciate it. And uh, we've been hearing a lot uh, leading up to this. I, I'm almost surprised at the overwhelming uh, amount of questions and whatnot that we have been getting. And uh, we have a few questions lined up from earlier in the week, and I'll try to get some of the members here tonight to address some and uh, hopefully we can keep this brief, uh, the answers as brief as we can, because we do have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, but I'd first off like to direct uh, a question back to James from Bruce Power, because uh, we have uh, received a lot of questions, James, uh, regarding Bruce Power, its involvement. And uh, 
I guess we'll get you to, to respond to the first one. It might be a tough one, but the hard ball is coming your way. That's okay. Uh, it's written. <laughs> it's uh, from Troy Patterson, and uh, he says, uh, rent has climbed to unsustainable levels in much of Bruce County due to the need for housing because of Bruce Power's refurbishment. We have a lot of people coming in to, to do work there, and they also need housing. Uh, he says this has created a cost of living uh, vulnerability for anyone making less than, say, $20 an hour, he says. Single people, families with single incomes. He wants to know what Bruce Power and the nuclear industry is doing to assist the region, uh, not just with affordable housing, but also with lower house, lower cost housing that we would consider attainable here this evening. And uh, not just for people on, say, the Bruce County housing waiting list, but for young families, for retail, low income uh, earners. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a I think it's a great question, and I, I think it's something that 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 we are absolutely really mindful of. I mean, first and foremost, you know, we as an organization uh, do whatever we can. Uh, it's a prep, it's a key value of ours to be a, a play a positive role in the community. So, you know, I think it goes without saying whether it's 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 healthcare, whether it's some of the work we've done with COVID nineteen response, whether it's the work we do with community groups. I think attainable housing is. Uh, obviously fits in. If, if, if something is a priority uh, to the community, it's a priority for us because we're part of the community. And, and um, so, you know, it's, it's not a tough question at all. It's something that, that, um, that, that we're committed to, to contributing to. What I would say though is, is, is also is we have to recognize that Bruce Power is not the, you know, we can't be the solution to, to every issue. So, you know, what we have to think very uh, hard about is, you know, where is it we can most effectively uh, support this important uh, effort? Uh, and, and, the, and the way I would answer the question is really to break it up into, uh, into to, to three specific, specific areas, Brian. Some of this we've done uh, in the past. Some of it we can continue doing in the future. Um, but I really think there's, there's three key elements here. The first is, you know, we do have a, uh, we do have a record uh, that we would be proud to build on where uh, in cases where uh, the county who has, uh, as you know, has responsibility for housing, uh, oftentimes the county partners with um, uh, other levels of government uh, in that endeavor, whether it's a municipality, whether it's the federal government, provincial government, or a developer, uh, in cases where the, the county has uh, developed uh, attainable or affordable housing, however you want to characterize it, uh, we have participated in those projects. We participated in, uh, in a number of projects in Soggy Shores, and just recently, uh, in the latter part of uh, 2019, we participated in a build that is actually underway in King Carden, where uh, we uh, we transferred an option of a, a parcel of land that we have here to our our training facility in King Carden. So the first thing I would say is, you know, um, to the extent there are projects, we are are you know all, always willing to to work with the community and find out what is. Uh, what is a reasonable way for, for us to support that similar to what we do in, in healthcare and other areas. So, um, you know, we want to uh, be part of those projects and, and contribute to them in, in, in whatever way we reasonably can. So that's the first thing, you know, I think the, the, the second thing that really comes to mind is, and I thought in, in Cheryl's um, when Cheryl talked about some of the focus areas or areas around, um, what some of the solutions could be coming out of this process around, uh, you know, um, you know, entities that, that can deliver this type of work, uh, partnerships. Um, the one thing I would say is that the, 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 re the approach that Bruce Power has taken to our life extension program since 2016, and it's fundamentally different than what we did on units one and two refurbishment, and it ties in with bringing these 60 suppliers into the Great Bruce and Huron County area is, We've really sought to levelize out our workforce. Um, so, you know, I think one of the, the most important things we can do is, um, is levelize out our work as much as possible, localize out as much as work as possible. Because in the absence of that, what happens, and, and we've seen this in cases in other Canadian jurisdictions, whether it's uh, Fort McMurray, whether it's other uh, regions of Canada where you have large development projects, is that those projects can go through a lot of peaks and valleys. And I think many talked, uh, I believe earlier, or maybe uh, uh, Mike did at the start about, you know, the cost of rental units. 
And so being able to provide a levelized out um, uh, uh, profile for our site with, with localization, I think what that does is it creates a, yes, it does have a, uh, uh, an upward demand on housing, but what it does is it actually provides a better planning horizon and it provides for that kind of stability so we can make some of these long-term decisions. You know, if, if this task force is going to try to work with the county, the province and the federal government to deal with a one or two year issue, you're not, we're not going to be successful because we're, you know, a lot of the government dollars in this space tend to be uh, in, in urban centers, uh, you know, the Toronto's, the GTA's, the Vancouver's. Um, uh, who have this need on a permanent basis. And so I think looking at the, this as a, a stable amount of activity on the Bruce Power site um, is going to create a foundation by which we can build some of those constructs that can, can deliver that kind of reliability for the, uh, for the long run. And I, you know, and I think that's not only important for the, rent, uh, the rental market in terms of people who want to rent uh, somewhere to live 12 months of the year, but we also have to keep in mind that a key driver in our economy is tourism. And it's really important that in addition to attainable or affordable housing, we also have uh, sufficient capacity within our tourist sector. So, you know, our businesses that count on tourism, who have been very impacted by COVID-19 in particular, uh, have access to that. So I think that stability, Brian, uh, is, a, uh, uh, is, is a really important component of that. The final thing that I would say is, 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 and I wouldn't underestimate this, you know, we're happy to uh, add our voice to this, add our, our uh, contacts to this, where, you know, if some of the recommendations coming out of this are around working with developers, looking at other models, you know, we, we want to be part of that in terms of connecting, uh, working with the county, working with municipalities on, you know, developers, other, other organizations who have looked at this, who, you know, may provide us the opportunity for some of those partnerships. But the one thing I would say is, 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 you know, we are in a situation where, you know, the good news is, is that we have a lot of activity related to this, um, to this refurbishment. And one of the things that's associated with a lot of that investment that we're making uh, is a significant amount of tax revenue. And this is where, um, you know, in addition to us contributing and being a part of the solution, this is also where we need to place appropriate pressure on various government funding envelopes. You know, the activities that are underway uh, in the nuclear industry in our region and across Ontario are contributing in an astronomical way to the growth of the economy. And with that comes tax revenue. And I think it's a very appropriate uh, dialogue to have about, you know, what is an appropriate reinvestment in some of these uh, host regions uh, into the key things that those regions need, whether it's roads, whether it's hospitals, schools, broadband. And in the case of this, and we know it's a top priority for residents, attainable housing. So, you know, I think one of the things that we have to be really careful about in this debate is um, if this was something easy to fix, it would be fixed in places across Canada. And there's very few municipality cities that have tackled this. And, you know, it would be an injustice to say it's a problem everywhere, so we shouldn't worry about it here. It is what it is. That would not be the right thing to do. But it's also not the right thing to do to think that there's any one organization that is part of the problem or any one organization that is part of the solution. And that's why I really think this attainable task force is so important. So I know, uh, Brian, I apologize. I know it's a long answer to your question, but it's something we're very thoughtful about. And it's something we want to be part of that solution uh, towards. Um, but I really think we're doing something special here in Saugeen Shores. If we can bring, you know, the community businesses together, levels of government, one of the problems governments have, and I, I don't want to defend politicians, but I will, because I'll tell you, most of the politicians I work with, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for it. whatever party they're part of, whatever municipality, they're good people who actually do what they do because they want to make a difference. A lot of the time, what levels of government are looking for is a comprehensive solution. And a lot of time people just bring problems. And so, you know, that's what I really like about this, Brian, is I think we have an opportunity to think of some innovative solutions. And, and also not, not let uh, perfection be the enemy of the good. If there's things we can do to move the dial, let's move the dial. Let's start with steps one through 10 before we argue about steps 49 through 74. So again, Brian, I apologize. I know it's a long answer to your question, but it's a fair question to pose to Bruce Power. We're, we're, we're driving a lot of economic activity and I'm, I'm glad Troy asked it.
Well, I, I thank you so much for your answer. Clearly well thought out. And uh, I know I've uh, lived through some of the peaks and valleys in this area before Bruce Power was even involved in the area. And uh, it, it, it's a great uh, plan that you mentioned there about spreading it out and uh, using your contacts to help this cause as well. So, And uh, those of us uh, within the community who are involved understand just how many great uh, things you are involved in and help the community benefit from. So we thank you for that, uh, James. And uh, I think we've got more more involvement for you later on this evening. Yeah, uh, I would like to get our uh, chair, Mike Myatt, back on as well. We have a, a question that I think he'll uh, like, would like to get involved in. Uh, it's from Dino Morrison, and he says, many years ago, I'm going to paraphrase to shorten it, he was involved in a board of directors on a subsidized uh, mixed income apartment. And back then, the federal provincial governments had subsidies that allowed them uh, to help acquire land and build and operate low cost housing. And his question is, uh, he's asking, is there any level of government programs now that could help cornerstone such a venture? And he said during the time he was involved in nonprofit housing, subsidies were uh, the only way they were uh, you could get to them was if you had a target of 25% of the household income was to be spent on housing or rent. Has that moved? And uh, is there any money possibly federally or provincially? Right? Well, thank, thanks for that, Brian. And uh, thank you, Dino, for the question. And there are a couple things there. Uh, uh, something really exciting happened back in April of 2019, and that's when the federal government released the, uh, the Canadian uh, how the housing strategy, uh, the national housing strategy, I should say, um, that strategy, uh, Brian, is designed to help those middle class Canadians uh, and lower wage earners find safe, accessible and, um, and affordable housing. So um, they rolled that program out. It's a $55 billion 10 year program uh, was created uh, to create uh, 100,000 new housing units and remove 530,000 families from housing needs. Now, James mentioned you know, a second ago and he's got it's, it's very valid. Um, when they have this national housing strategy, and unfortunately, um, they go where the most need is sometimes, and they feel that the most need tends to be your uh, your urban centers, like your your, your Toronto's and your and your Hamiltons and so on forth, so forth. So um, that that's the unfortunate part. But I, I will say that Bruce County, uh, Tandy Dixon, our housing manager, is constantly uh, on the lookout for for funding that could be available uh, to build new housing stock, um, whether it be for rent geared income housing or for new apartment units in that 600, 800, a thousand dollar range. So uh, the, that, the answer to that is yes. I think that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking all the time and I know the county is always searching. The, the second part, um, you know, Dino, I, is, is about the um, um, rent uh, geared income. I just want to say to you that the, um, the 25% you're referring to um, a few years back was updated to, to 30%. So basically what that is, is uh, you're subsidized or rent geared income housing um, to income 30% of your gross monthly income. Uh, not supposed to exceed that. So I used an example earlier. Uh, if your household income is $40,000 per year, then really uh, that, that equates to $12,000 per year. You should be no more than that spending on uh, on rent which equals about a thousand dollars a month so if your if your household income is is at forty thousand dollars thirty percent thousand dollars a month this is what the guideline is and so um, that's the answer brian i it's uh, it's something yes funding i think we're always going to be we're going to be on the lookout for funding for new housing stock and um we need to try and drive those uh, those rental rates down brian Thank you very much for that, Mike. And uh, James, I think you have a uh, question for one of our other members. Absolutely. So this next question uh, is from uh, Penny Angst from Penny Angster, and it's to Cheryl. I think maybe we'll we'll shoot this one your way. So, um, you know, why is it that there's so many people looking for affordable housing in Port Elgin compared to other communities, or is Soggy Shores different from other communities? What's your perspective on that? Uh, thanks, Penny, for the question. Um, and I'm going to answer it from the perspective of Sogging Shores as opposed to just Port Elgin. Um, I put your question to our task force members for some input from them as well. 
Uh, so we're waiting for the results of our survey and the other discussions that we're going to have uh, through our stakeholder meetings and our community meeting, and that will give us more definitive answers. But at this point, we identified some of the following factors that may be creating more housing demand and higher prices than in other areas um, in our region or in Ontario. Number one, as you know, we're a tourism town. And as a result, we have a thriving short-term rental market. And that short-term rental market in the summer months allows owners to rent for premium prices at that time um, and makes year-long rentals less profitable. So what we see happening then is that uh, sometimes people can rent from September to June or September to the end of May. Um, and uh, then they have uh, the, that particular rental housing is then used for uh, tourism, very um, lucrative tourism rentals in the summertime. Number two, uh, our town is becoming increasingly an attractive destination for seasonal residents and for retirees, and that drives up the demand. Number three, um, our median household income is high, over $105,000 annually. So housing prices increase commensurately. And number four, and this is something that James referred to earlier, um, there's some indication that COVID-19 has created even more demand for housing here and in uh, rural areas or tourism areas. Um, one thing we've heard recently is that some snowbirds who only live here during the summer um, and are used to going down south for the winter won't be able to go there, obviously, this year, or many of them won't. Um, so now they have to find housing over the winter, and that may be, um, that will be a challenge. Um, also, there seems to be an increased demand for homes outside of the city and suburban areas during the pandemic. So that, again, is another stressor um, that may be uh, making uh, attainable housing um, less attainable in Sogging Shores. Thanks. Thank you very much, Cheryl. And I mean, really, the, the question is, just look around. What a beautiful area. Uh, what a beautiful municipality we have. No wonder we, we are needing more housing in it. It's a wonderful place to live, for sure. Um, and I'm going to turn the question over to Jay now because this involves uh, zoning. And watch this because Jay it blows me away. He knows everything about the bylaws and, and the zoning issues in this town. It's uh, from Michelle Norman. And uh, Jay, they're asking if you will consider, and I know you don't make the changes, but will you consider changing zoning for local seasonal trailer parks from recreational to residential? Uh, will you build apartments for long-term rentals for people on fixed income? Very difficult, uh, Michelle says, to find long-term rentals for $1,000 a month, which is a number that uh, Mike has thrown around a lot tonight. They, uh, a lot of them only seem to be available October to May, and then uh, it, it goes up to 1000 a week, and we know why. Uh, that's uh, unaffordable. And uh, we also have a lot of suppliers to our uh, Bruce Power industry move to town. Uh, but there's very few places, Michelle says, to rent or buy on a budget. Um, what are the local towns do? What are the local towns doing to accommodate the influx of people? And uh, tell us about those bylaw possibilities to be changed, Jane. Okay. Or Jane, sorry. Uh, well, <laughs> you, you certainly know how to flatter Brian, and I, I, I only uh, <laughs> think I might be letting the uh, you and the the. Um, Michelle down with my answer because I'm not intending to hedge, but I think when it comes to zoning and uh, well, it comes to a lot of public policy is that we shouldn't be insisting on solubility. In other words, not, don't come up with the one action that will solve your problem, but we really should focus on progress. So when I make recommendations on planning issues, uh, I'm looking at how to create flexibility and diversity in the regulation so that it makes it easier for landowners, developers, and even the community to build in the case of housing what they want so 
uh, when it comes to uh, converting trailer parks from rec to residential, yes, I th certainly think the task force should be looking at that and will, I hope, uh, it, it is part of their recommendation to council. Same goes for building apartments. I think the regulations and policies should be made more flexible and create diversity in housing stock so that it makes it easier to build apartments in our community and allow us to manage rents so that they're uh, uh, that they can be uh, you know made so that people can afford to live there. So I, th I guess that's that's my answer, and I hope I'm not hedging too much. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. So uh, no, you're not. You're not. Uh, you're not under delivering. I, I, you know, I, I always, uh, always find a lot of these these zoning things incredibly complicated. So it's good there's somebody that understands that that folks can call. Um, I guess Jay, well, I'm going to move the next question over to Brian because I mean, Brian, even though he looks like a really young guy, he's lived here a really long time. Uh, and Brian, this this question is for uh, for you from Nancy. Uh, and, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good question and, um, you know, it kind of ties in with a little bit of my response to your question around, you know, tourism is an important part of the economy, um, but, you know, we don't have a lot of tourists here in Soggy Shores in January, February, March. And, and Nancy's question is, you know, that she's lived here in Soggy Shores her whole life. Um, she sees uh, six month rentals being a, a challenge when she lives here 12 months of the year. Um, and you know, this, this, you know, and her comment is really about, you know, we need to think about local residents as much as tourists, uh, and who's going to be here in the winter to pay the rent. So I know that, um, uh, that's a bit of a sort of, a, a, a hardball question, but you know what, it's a fair question and it's not that permanent residents, it's, it's not uh, pointing the fingers, but it's just a reality of a tourist community. We need accommodations for, for that tourist population. But we also have folks that live here 12 months a year. So how, how do you uh, square that, Brian? Well, it is. Uh, thanks, Jim. It is a, a very fair question. And uh, thank you for the young looking comment. I don't know where that uh, comes from. I have lived here nearly five decades uh, since I was three years old, uh, with the exception of a couple years uh, away for education. So, uh, Nancy, uh, the answer to your question is I, I do think we are thinking about more than just tourists. And uh, that, that's one of the reasons why we're here and why we formed this committee and we're working on this very issue, obviously. Um, uh, I, too, in my younger days, rented a cottage. Uh, I remember exactly where it was, and it was $250 a month, and I had to get out in June because it was probably $250 a week after that. Now, $250 a month, you will know that was a very long time ago. Um, and I was just 17 at the time, but I was thrilled to have that, even if it was for only nine or 10 months of the year. Um, and uh, that's it's something that happens for sure. And I guess the uh, the simple answer is that renting uh, rental pricing is market driven. And uh, the, the tourists do drive that. The visitors to our area drive that up. And you really can't blame someone who owns a cottage or who owns apartments for trying to earn the maximum that they can from their often very sizable investment. They uh, maybe spent their own uh, personal fortune on a property and they, they want the return as best they can on there. I, I don't think they're trying to be mean. They're just trying to to get by like the rest of us, perhaps. Uh, and it is an issue that's an important one for me personally. I have uh, seven children, Nancy. Uh, some of them I have finally got moved out and the others I hope to have moved out sometime in my lifetime. I hope to find them some attainable housing and, and keep them close to home in Sogging Shores. And that, that's why I'm confident that our town council, number one, has set housing as a priority. I've been watching a lot of council uh, meetings and they absolutely take this as a, uh, as a, a top issue. And I think our committee and the uh, task force is on the right track and hopefully we'll start seeing results sooner than later with uh, rental availability year round. And I think just adding more inventory to the housing market will help inevitably drive that down along with all the other changes that we are going to recommend near the end of this year to council. So that's how I would uh, address that, Nancy. And thanks for so much for the question. Uh, now, uh, we uh, have another question. I think, where are we at here? Just about eight o'clock, but we've got so many great questions coming in. I'd like to, to keep them going a little bit. And this one is one that is really close to uh, Chair Mike Myatt's heart. 
he has talked about tiny homes uh, right from day one. John Van Bassler, who's also on our committee, is uh, uh, he seems to be a big fan of tiny homes. And the uh, the question here, there's actually a couple questions from two different people, but they're nearly the same. Uh, uh, Carrie Kent, Mike, asks uh, if there's any way we can bring tiny homes. It's so affordable. Simple question. And Mary Gibbons uh, asked Sogging Shores. Uh, Soggy George really needs more affordable housing for seniors as well. What about tiny home community for seniors where they can rent or uh, houses according to their income? Well, thank you, Brian. And you're right. Uh, and first of all, thank you to uh, Carrie and Mary for their, their questions about tiny homes. And it's something I do get, get excited about um, talking about tiny homes. I mean, you know, when I talked earlier about average household purchase price in the last three months, uh, $501,000, you know, that's again not not that affordable nor attainable to to some in our community. And wouldn't it be great if we were able to uh, find a, a parcel of land, work with a private developer, and and build a little uh, build a nice uh, uh, a, t a tiny home development, uh, a little recreation center? I mean, it could be wonderful. And uh, tiny homes, um, you know, I mean, I've done done quite a bit of research on them, and you know, I think we can, you know, they can be built for under two fifty. Uh, 250,000, maybe under 200,000, depending on what we build. But um, that's certainly a lot more affordable, attainable than 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 five hundred, one thousand dollars. Some people are moving. I mean, it'd be, perhaps you've lost a spouse, and and um, you decided that you want to move out of that two thousand square foot home into something that's six or seven hundred square feet. Wouldn't it be wonderful to move into a in into a tiny home? Um, so, Brian, I'm 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 actually touring a little tiny home development. Uh, next week with a friend of mine. Um, it's just uh, between here and in Old Sound and uh, I'm gonna get a clear look to see what uh, tiny home development looks like. They're, they're popping up um, all around the province. And, and, and to Carrie and, and Mary, I, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I've, I've been a big supporter of Joseph Bryan since the inception of the uh, Attainable Housing Task Force. And it's something I really would like to pursue. And I I really hope that the, uh, the Attainable Housing Task Force um, sees fit. Uh, depending again, we're just in the we're just launching this meeting this evening. We're in the information gathering stages, and um, you know, I from what I'm seeing early in the process, there's a lot of interest in tiny homes. So I hope our Attainable Housing Task Force will will see fit to to, to place one of the uh, recommendations that we're we're making to council at year end. Uh, one may may be associated with tiny homes, and again, that that decision, what recommend recommendation we made to council, um, will be based on what we hear from our survey, uh, what we hear from our, st our key stakeholder meetings, and our, our community forum, which we want to talk about a little bit later. But so to Carrie and Mary again, I you know I really see two options. Um, I see one of the options where a uh, a resident actually has the opportunity. Maybe as a, a first-time home buyer or someone downsizing, a first opportunity to, to buy a, a tiny home for hopefully $250,000 or less. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, and, and secondly, uh, if, if owning is still not an option, um, because you might be in that, that lower to moderate income level, then, then maybe tiny homes, I'm just saying maybe, uh, these are all options at this point, uh, could be built where uh, a person could actually uh, uh, rent it. And based on their income. Now that's that's a conversation with Bruce County and, and private developers, and and I think that's a discussion that uh, we really need to have. So so Brian, um, yes, uh, back to you again. But I I really do uh, get excited when we talk about tiny homes because I think it's just a really really good opportunity for that segment of the population, you know, that that are in the, in, the, in the low to moderate income, say maybe downsizing. Um, I, I would, I would certainly like to be the the second in the area. There's one development I just found about just east of here, but would it be nice to have a tiny home development here? I, I, it'd be nice to help a lot of people. So well, thanks thank for that, you Brian. so much for that answer. And I don't think you're the only one excited about tiny homes there. Uh, I watch HGTV on Saturday morning as well. And a lot of do do it yourselfers are pretty excited about tiny homes as well. So. Right. I'm going to uh, turn over to James. I think he has another question here for one of our members. Yeah, so the next question is to Cheryl. And Cheryl, this is a question from Cindy. And, and her question reads as follows. This has been an ongoing problem for years. How many buildings will actually be built to accommodate low-income people? Our town has grown substantially, and people who work for minimum wage 
cannot even begin to think about finding a rental that isn't outrageously priced. To continue to grow, we need to take action sooner rather than later. Just sort of wondering, you know, as you sort of think, Cheryl, about the, uh, the scope of the committee and, you know, what's your perspective on sort of what, what people can be uh, expect from a time perspective and, and to really address Cindy's issue? Thanks, James. And thank you for the question, Cindy. It's a good one. Um, at this point, we don't know how many affordable housing buildings and homes would be built. We can't say specifically, but these are questions that our task force is exploring uh, in conjunction with the county uh, and Bruce County Housing Services. Um, and what we're looking for in our survey results is more specific information about all of our residents' specific needs. So. I think we mentioned earlier, we're gonna be looking at what lands may be available, um, municipal and otherwise, um, what builders may be willing to build in a variety of types of housing, uh, including for those with low incomes, uh, both for rentals and for purchase, uh, because we want to meet all residents' needs, including those individuals where a high percentage of their income is going to housing. Um, our task force, our council, the county, and staff are looking at as many innovative, innovative solutions to this problem as possible, but it also requires funding. And we're hopeful that the federal and provincial governments will provide funding to move this along as quickly as possible. Thank you, Cheryl. That is uh, wonderful. And. Uh, we're just a little bit over the hour now, and I think that uh, we're still holding on to people. So I'd like to go to a couple more questions that we got late, if we don't mind. Uh, I've got one that I really think is important, and I'm going to uh, direct this one to Min, if I can, to Minnie. Uh, and it's an interesting question because it seems to come from somebody who maybe doesn't need attainable housing for himself. It's from Jim L. of Port Elgin. And uh, his question, Minnie, is why should someone like myself, he says, I'm well off, I own my home, which I bought when I first started working, why should I even care about housing at all for all incomes and ages, i.e. attainable housing? Not my problem, really, is it? Now, I don't know if he's uh, just saying, hey, this isn't my problem, so I don't care, or if he's looking for your response to tell other people why it is important for people in all groups. Well, it, it, Jim, I have to say it's not the first time I've heard this uh, question asked. And I, I think maybe what the problem is, maybe you're getting confused with affordable with attainable. And, and Mike uh, did a very good job of explaining the difference between affordable and attainable. But just in a nutshell for you, Jim, anybody who's frustrated in trying to find a rental property or a home property within their budget, they're looking for attainable housing. So maybe Jim, right now you're not looking for property, but chances are maybe your your life circumstances will change. You may want to downsize. You may want to, uh, for whatever reason, decide that you don't want to do the yard work and you may decide maybe, maybe I want to rent. So it's really not just about your circumstances right now and the fact that maybe you do have income. Um, and I think that's part of the problem is people are just getting a little mixed up. So really what i'm saying is housing that we're looking for for attainable housing is for all ages and maybe the best thing i can tell you jim is maybe the benefits for you if you're not looking for attainable housing because for those residents that are saying well i'm staying in my home forever i'm not moving so this subject matter really doesn't have anything to do with me there are a lot of benefits for attainable housing and our community will really benefit from that such things as for all residents better health adequate jobs, as James mentioned about our tourism industry and maybe getting more workers coming to the area, financial stability, um, also looking at the population diversity for a community. Uh, it's important to have that. The effects of this attainable housing task force for all residents will be profound. And, and one of the goals this task force, this task force has, Jim, is to showcase you the different types of attainable homes you could own or the type of home you could rent that could be built throughout our community. Maybe not tomorrow, but maybe you'd be looking in a couple of years. 
Um, local builder, Steve Dennison, who actually is the owner of Dennison Homes, and he's also a member of our task force, summed it up really well, Jim, as to why you and our fellow residents would want to have a variety of housing options in our area and different designs and different pricings to rent and also to purchase in our community. Here's what Steve said. For a housing market to function, it needs to have sellers and buyers all along the bell curve to stay healthy and to be able to move up and down the housing curve based on their need and budget. If there's only a top half of the curve, eventually the market and sales will suffer. That will affect many homeowners, probably you too, Jim. You also want a varied group of people in your community to sustain a vibrant community and also be able to offer services that people want to have for the community where they chose to live. So even if you're not looking for attainable housing, the ripple effect that this will have for all residents of all ages and all incomes is dramatic. And that's why the Housing Task Force is saying attainable housing will have an impact on all the residents for the positive. Thanks a lot for your question, Jim. And thank you, Minnie. And I would just like to add, Jim, if you uh, maybe some evening you want to go out for a meal and uh, that restaurant you want to go to is closed, that may be because that person working at that restaurant couldn't afford to live in town and uh, that restaurant could, didn't have an employee that night to serve dinner and didn't get to stay open. So it does affect everybody in our community. So thanks for the question. And thanks everyone for the question tonight. I'd like to uh, thank the task force members who joined us as we're wrapping things up. Thank you to uh, everyone who registered and logged in this evening and uh, thought enough to send us your questions. And don't forget about the survey on the town website. I also uh, want to thank uh, James Skoniak tonight from Bruce Power for co-moderating and coming out and answering some of those difficult questions. I'll uh, turn it over to you, James, for a uh, quick closing remark, and then to our, you can hand it over to Mike to say good night. As mentioned, there's a lot of information that is going to be posted and available on the Town of Soggy Shores website, so go there. Um, you know, I'd encourage people, in addition to filling out the survey, and as Brian mentioned, the survey is uh, very widely available. You know, feel free to share share that on your social media as well, so your your friends and your neighbors and your coworkers. Uh, you know, know it's important and, um, uh, and, and, you know, you can really help us promote that and, and get that information out. Obviously, a really critical issue for the community. I want to thank uh, everybody for joining us uh, this evening. And uh, to, to sort of send us over the finish line, uh, I'll turn it over to Mike Myatt, the chair, to, to, to wrap things up tonight. Mike. <laughs> Well, thank, thanks again, James, and uh, thank you, Brian, again, for co-moderating Bruce Power, James. Uh, just tremendous that you've uh, you sponsored this evening, and it's and it's ran well, and, and the, the people behind the scenes have really made it happen. And Jay Posner, Dana Van Allen, Sarah Wilson, uh, we had an excellent staff at Town Hall, and I just want to thank them for all their, their great work with helping to make this happen this evening as well. Um, I just, you know, having over 200 uh, residents uh, chime in to listen in, participate in this meeting this evening uh, this is uh, it, it's just really a testament to the interest and, and concern that people have in our community uh, about housing and it, I think as attainable, the attainable housing task force we want to ensure that we can move more to the attainable uh, affordability affordability category uh, we're going to work hard uh, over the next few months to come up with some solid recommendations uh, to our mayor and members of council and to let them know what uh, what we feel, how we feel about moving moving forward with adding more housing stock. Again, that's more attainable, more affordable. So uh, I encourage people to, the survey's been launched, I think during this program this evening, the, the survey actually formally got launched. Um, and uh, please, please fill out the survey. It's important to, to hear from the public. And the other thing I want to mention, uh, we, didn't, we didn't mention a whole lot this evening, but there will be some stakeholder meetings coming up in, in October. We've had some 24 organizations come forth uh, and have said we want to participate. So we have four uh, stakeholder meetings lined up for October. Uh, thank you, John Van Basselaar, uh, for organizing and Cheryl Bryan from Omafra for facilitating. The other thing we'll be looking at in November, just to wind things up, is um, we, will, we want to give people lots of opportunity to speak to housing in our community. It's just beginning tonight. This is the official launch. 
I want to give people lots of opportunity. And in November, our plan is to run community roundtable meetings. Now, we'd love to be able to be up in the Rotary Hall, but with this darn um, thing called COVID-19 floating around, uh, it may have to be virtual. But we, we are going to give the public lots of opportunity uh, to um, have input into our um, housing recommendations that we're preparing for, for council. So um, I just want to thank everyone again for tuning in. It's been wonderful, lots of interest. And uh, Brian, I'll turn things back to you, but uh, it's been a great night. Thanks. That is all we have for this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure you fill out the survey, soggingshores.ca. Keep track of what we're doing there and uh, keep watching your local council, something coming soon. Thank you very much for tuning in and registering this evening. Good night.